So the word defibrillator for today, we, we trusted God for a word from within the word. Now we did talk about faith yesterday and how faith is needed to make any venture come to pass. Well, nowadays just to live life takes an amazing amount of faith. And the word faith is best described in the Bible and just referring to it's believing in the things that cannot be seen. So in your mind, in your heart, they are 100% reality. And in that, as you think it, it becomes that. And many famous people and guys who have done, and ladies, uh, guys being men and women, have done amazing things with their lives. And that's from Hebrews 11 verse 1. So faith is something that you're going to need to make this happen. And I think it's faith first in God, and then faith secondly in you. You know, Jesus was in the garden and he went to the Father to pray and say, listen, Father, please take this cup from me. And the Father's like, it's okay, you can do this. Take this cup and you need to drink it. And Jesus' heart uh, understood that if his Father believed in him and said it would be okay, it would be okay. And praise God for that, eh? So now we're going to go in for another foundational scripture that is definitely needed in, in more of an understanding, you need to understand the scripture when we're going to go into the next one is uh, following on from faith yesterday. This is Ephesians 3, starting off at verse 17. May Christ, ah, through your faith. Uh, let me just go back one more. Okay. Verse 16, may he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and person. Well, your personality. Now, this is the amplified version where we expand. So how's this? The Holy Spirit will be indwelling your innermost being and within your personality. Now, how do we know the Holy Spirit is in our personality? Well, personality is the way a person acts around people. Um, it's their behavior, their moods. So the fruits of the Spirit, peace, joy, long-suffering, all of those will be evident that the Holy Spirit is dwelling within you. May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, and make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely in love. What a beautiful setup. What a beautiful foundation to what he's about to tell us. That you may have the power. Now we've got the Holy Spirit within us. We've got Jesus Christ in our hearts through faith, and we spoke about faith, that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, that's you and I, God's devoted people, the experience of that love, what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of it. So we are needing power to be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints. God's devoted people, the experience of that love. Wow. So we are not going to experience and even have the strength to contain it unless we have the Holy Spirit himself indwelling our innermost being and personality as well as having Jesus Christ in our hearts. And that is so that we can have the power to apprehend the love of God. Its breadth, its length, its height, the depth of it. Wow. Now, why? Well, that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge. So it's one thing reading the scripture and having knowledge about it, but to experience that you may really come to know practically through the experience for yourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge, without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto the fullness of God, may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. So there's a whole buildup. 
It's the presence of the Holy Spirit filling our innermost being and our character, and our personality, Jesus Christ in our hearts, giving us the power to understand the love of God that we will practically experience, not mere knowledge, we will experience that love of God, the love of the Father, that we will be totally filled and flooded with God himself. Now watch this. This is where it's very important when we're stepping out in that faith, in that understanding of love of, uh, with the love of God, that he's got you. God has certainly got you. It's okay. You can go ahead and at least try. We talked about yesterday, faith without works is dead. It is useless. It is worthless. It is powerless. If you do not take that faith, that measure of faith that God has given you, and at least try. Put it into action. Now to him, verse 20, this is Ephesians 3 verse 20, now to him who, by in consequence of the action of his power that is in work within us, at work within us, is able to ca carry out his purpose and do super abundantly, far over and above all that we. Now this is very scary, but extremely exciting. I mean, this, this is exciting. This got me going, and I'll tell you, once this was an understanding for me, it's like, oh boy, watch out world, here we come. And I'll tell you one thing, I'm sure God summons a few more angels to work on my behalf and really said, okay, he's got this. Focus, people, focus. Watch this. Now to him who by inconsequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose, not yours, his, and do super abundantly far over and above. Super abundantly is more than abundant. So abundant is more than enough. Super abundantly is more than, more than, more than that. Far over and above all that we, I'm not joking, it says, we dare to ask. Don't dare me. Do not <laughs> dare me. And here in my face, out of scripture, far over above all that we dare ask or think, I dare you to think big. Yes, we think small, because small things are a good confirmation, but think big. I dare you to ask. Doesn't the Bible say that... Uh, we have not, because we ask not. That's the scripture for another day. Far over and above all that we dare, I dare you, dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Come on. How much more permission do we need? How much more enabling do we need? The infilling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus within our hearts. The experience of the absolute love of God for us that empowers us. I mean, we need the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus in our hearts, to actually experience and be able to contain the love of God. And out of that, He has a purpose and a destiny for you, and it's going to come to pass. Uh-oh. Remember we said if you're going to put your plans before the Father, he'll make your thoughts according to his will. Here's his will. So if you want to start a bakery and you're going to make uh, 12 loaves of bread a day, you better facilitate more. If you want to bless five people, hmm, it's saying he's going to give you more than we dare to ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. If you think you're getting it right today, if you think your dreams are big, if you think this moment is, is amazing, wow, I can promise you this. When I look back at my life, there is no ways on this planet Earth that I even thought I'd be where I am today, doing what I'm doing. And the opportunity to watch God move through my life and touch and change people's lives. Unbelievable. Far bigger, far above anything I could have thought of. People look at me and say, oh, Sean, that was very clever. Why? Not on your life. There is no good thing in my life today that I have anything to do with. I know with 100% what humility is. And humility 
is when you realize it's had nothing to do with you. Because in my personal capacity, I am certainly not able to come up with what I've come up with. Sure, as things unfold, God exposes things and reveals things to me, and I get the ah ah moments, and I go, ah, oh, I got this a little bit left. But I'll tell you one thing. If God left me up to myself, there's no way as I'd be the hero of my story. And how exciting it is to walk in that story. I mean, all our days were preordained before one of them are lived. I want that life that God set aside for me. And it's so nice understanding that He loves me so much that it doesn't matter what I try and do, He is there for me and He will adjust as we go because He has a purpose. And he will carry out that purpose. So the word for today. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now to him who, by inconsequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare, I dare you to ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes or dreams. Now, there's the key. You need to start asking. You need to start thinking. You need to start praying. Desires means you need to start to want. You need to start thinking of how it could be. You need to have those hopes where there's that it's going to come true. It's an expectation. And those dreams, you need to live it again. You need to smell them, see them, feel them. You need to see those colors. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word on how amazing it is, Father, that we can actually fathom. I pray, Holy Spirit, you fill every part of our being and our personality. And Lord Jesus, that you sit within our hearts, that we can have the strength to experience and understand the love of God for us and for us to be able to walk in that purpose. And Father, that we have the courage to say, Father, for me to fulfill this, for me to, to walk this out, this is what I want. And Father, I trust and we trust that as we put our plans before you, Father, you will make those thoughts according to your will. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your abundance, your super abundance, Father, in every area in our lives. Putting us in a position that we are cheerful givers, Father, that we understand that we are here to serve you and your agenda in our lives. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for this day that you have set it aside. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Yeah.